Hey, what's up guys? This is Guy here with KB Trainings, where I share with you my knowledge in AIT and I also share with you what I'm still learning in this field. So today I'm going to talk a little bit about the new certifications. If you are in the tech industry, today is uh, February 26th, 2020. And two days ago on February 24th, Cisco just released the new line of certifications, new materials that you need to work for. So in this video, I'm going to give you my secret and the best way that you can study to get to those certifications that you're aiming for. You may be asking yourself, who am I to say anything? You know, I'm just nobody. I'm here to tell you what I've been using and it worked so far for me. I have a CCNP and three CCNAs. And right now I'm working toward my CCIE that I'm planning to get some time before the end of this year. First of all, before getting to that secret or the way or the tips that you can apply into your study, we need to know why you are getting certified. You're getting certified to get the knowledge and become marketable. Certifications are changing depending on the industry and the tech industry is changing a lot. It's changing all the time. Every year things become different. All technology are getting rid of, new technology are coming in, new focuses are being created, pushing employers to seek for certain kind of skills and things that certifications will teach you. So that's why every so often you need to get recertified, you need to take the exam, so you need to make sure that your skills are sharp and you are ready for any new position that you are going for. And that's what I like about it. You can't be static, you need to move, you need to be dynamic, you need to be able to follow where the knowledge is right now. Like these days, people are talking about automation. It's all about SD1. It's all about all those new things that you need to master. And that's why Cisco is just keeping up and they're trying to update those things so often. And the knowledge will help you in any position that you're going to be. So that's why, I really didn't understand the rush of some people to take a certification or an exam that's about to expire. It really doesn't make any sense because unless you've been preparing for it for a long time, of course, but if you just waking up and hear about some certifications being in the process of being retired and just rushing to get it, I really don't know. I don't understand it. My only thing would probably be because you want to use dumps. And that's really bad. The dumps are really bad for the industry. It's kind of lower the value of the certification itself. And it's also, you know, putting into market a lot of people that are skillless or that have no clue or have no passion for what they're doing. And they just don't want to put a lot of work into what they do. You know, they're trying to memorize the things and then go and take the exam, but the actual knowledge is missing. And that's bad because when you get certified, the thing is that you have to know, you become someone knowledgeable. The level of your certification should determine the level of things that you are able to do. So if you fake your way into certifications, you find yourself in positions that you can really be comfortable with. If there is something that scares me in life is being in a position where I don't feel comfortable, where I don't feel like I belong. And that's something that should happen to you. That's why if you are working for the cert, you need to be ready to put your time, to put your effort to put your energy toward it and the result will be just astonishing. The result will create passion in you. It will create something that will go way over the paper, way over the certification. It's not all about the badge. It's not about the signature. It's not about the title. It's about the knowledge that you have in your head. It's about the value that you bring to your employer, to your customer or anyone who is going to use the knowledge that you are acquiring in the process of the certification. I don't know about you, but me most of the time after passing the exam, I feel some kind of emptiness. I, I don't really have that joy that I was expecting to have because you just you just feel like, okay, it's over now, what's next? And that's the good thing I like about this. Some people are just being good at challenging themselves and you going to be just moving forward through your career without any problem. So that's why it's mostly about the journey because the journey is where you learn the journey is what makes you different. It's not the certification, it's the journey. Of course, the cert is there for you to show that you've spent time or you've spent, uh, you've put a lot of effort. So certification will help you get knowledge on things that you are not even using in your current position because most of the time in companies, mostly big corporate, you won't be doing a lot. You'll probably be in one section of the business doing a certain thing, 
But when you are getting certified, you are exposed to some new technologies that you never heard or that you will never hear in your current position or in your current company. That's why certifications will just keep you at the top or at the edge of everything that's happening in enterprise, you know, service providers or wireless technology or security or anything. So that was the first part. You need to understand why you want or you need to get certified. If you know that, the following part will be just easy for you. I'm just going to give you some tips or some ways to get your certifications without any problem. The first secret that I'm going to give you today is that everything that you have to know for the exam is somewhere in a Cisco documentation. That's not a CCIE trick that I learned and I'll get to that later on. When you are in the process of getting certified, the first thing that you do is go on the website and download the exam blueprint because that's your guide. That's something that you need to have all the time because you will refer to that to know exactly where you stand in your study. It's very helpful. You have to start there. You can, um, you can download the blueprint and print it out or you can just keep it on your computer. I usually just use OneNote and put the print and put the, the blueprint over there so I can track every day or every week to see what I've done and what's left for me to do. Don't buy the book. Don't buy anything. Just go on the Cisco's website and get the exam blueprint. The second thing that you need to get is the course objectives because on the Cisco website, they just made it so easy for you. Cisco has classes that you can take or I don't know, I can call it call them book camp because I see usually they're like five to seven days. So they're, they're like book camps that you can go to to study those things. And the good thing is that the course objectives that you need to know or you need to get or the final result that you need to achieve after taking the class is available online. So that's something you should download, you should print out or have it in OneNote or wherever you want to put it so you can follow that as well. You can go line by line, you can go every day to see exactly where you stand compared to your goals. And the third thing is what I mentioned before. You have to know how to find what you need on the Cisco's website. Cisco has a huge documentation that you can go through to find whatever topic or whatever technology or whatever thing. And what I noticed is that most of the technical or most of the non so technical questions are from the Cisco's website. I can pretty much guarantee you that most of the things that are not technical or most of the theory is on the Cisco website. So if you know how to read what Cisco is writing about something, you'll be good on that topic. Let's say you want to learn STP, Spanning Tree Protocol. What you do is that you go on Google or you can go just on the Cisco website directly. So you read what Cisco is writing about that protocol. You read the white papers, you read the configuration guides, you read the documentation that Cisco is putting out there for you because that's where questions are coming from. So if you do that, you tell me next time in the next exam, things will be coming from there. You don't need to read dumps. The fourth element is that you need to watch some videos. Videos are good. Videos to me, they replace bootcamp. I don't really have to go to a bootcamp. Right now, some videos are paid, some videos are free, some videos are just a click away. You just need to find them at the right place. Personally, I use INE.com. They are pretty good. It's really worth the money. I invest into it every year because it's for my own knowledge. I watch a lot of videos. I watch a lot of topics. I watch, you know, I learn a lot of technology on INE.com. You can use any other, you know, training company out there. You can use CBT Nuggets. You can use, uh, I don't know any other, but my preferred is INE.com. And um, you can also use free videos that are available on YouTube. A lot of people put out very good content on YouTube and you have to know exactly who to watch. Um, I'm talking about people that I've been watching personally for a long time for any kind of topic. Um, people like Rob Ricker, people like uh, Kevin Wallace. He also has some good classes that you can get from him as well. People like Keith Barker, there are people that you need to follow. You need to follow them on YouTube. Every time they release something, you take a look. Do I know this? If you don't know, watch what he's doing. If you know, you just skip it, go to something else. Also, you need to watch Cisco Live. Cisco Live has beautiful content on many topics. Just look it up and you find it and watch what they say. If it's over your head, you can lower it down or you can just keep watching because there are also some few words that you can pick up there that would be good for you. And the fifth thing that you have to do is doing a lot of labs. When you are reading those white papers or configuration guides, 
when you are watching those videos. At the end of the day, the goal is to tell you about a technology and to push you to do a lot of labs about that thing specifically. And I cannot stress that enough. The lab is the best way for you to learn. I can say that the lab constitute maybe 65 or 70 percent of my study time. It's just labbing. When you lab, you understand things in your own way. You understand things in the way that you only can explain. You don't memorize what's written in a book. You don't memorize what someone told you. You don't memorize the questions that are in a dump. You know it yourself and you can explain it on your own. That's why labs are very important. And I've shown you my data center. I have a rack on which I put a couple of servers with ESXi and I just build a lot of topologies in that server. Most of the time, when I'm not busy doing something, when I'm not on a big product project or when I'm not on the job, I do lab. I lab all the time, all kind of lab, and I, I mostly like free labs. Free labs are just you waking up and say, hey, today I'm just gonna focus on ABGP and you start building your labs on ABGP on your own without really having like a cookie cutter or something that you are required to do in a specific way. So if you do your own lab, if you build your own lab, you create your own questions. You know what you want to do next. You know how far or how deep you want to build the technology. You are going to become very powerful and you will not have any problem taking the exam or passing them. You can build your lab in many ways. If you are at the CCNA level, Packet Trusser is acceptable. To me, I think GNS3 or Viral would be a way to go if you want to step up your game a little bit. And also one thing that I want to tell you, it's not bad to over study that that's one of the things that i like about ine.com because i feel like every time i study they always go an extra mile if i study for the ccna for example you just feel like the content or the explanation it goes way more beyond the ccna scope they go to the ccnp level and if you study for the ccnp you feel like what they're giving you or what they're feeding you it's kind of going to the cci level and that's what i like about it that's why it's always good to go beyond what you are required to do the actual exam will come becomes very easy for you and you won't have any problem doing it so i said that don't buy books but at least if you really have to have book i recommend to have a membership on safari online they are pretty good um i do have it this year for the ccie but if you are still at the CCNA level, I'm not sure if that's going to be very helpful to you because the Cisco documentation will also will already give you enough. But um, anything that you can go through, it's just, uh, it's just you being ready. It's your state of mind. You need to be ready to study all the time. That's what I do here. So I was just sitting down with my laptop, logging into my server and start doing those labs. Labs are really good. Don't forget about them. KB training here is created to share with you those things. I'll be creating a lot of video about, about the exam that I'm going to get next, which is the enterprise core exam. If you want more content on it, if you want to see how I do my labs, if you want to know more about everything, uh, you can subscribe to this channel, KB Trainings, and follow me on social media as well. But the goal is to keep you in focus. I'm also going to create some classes for the CCNA or um, um, the CCNP as well. So be connected and we're going to go through them very easily and get you to your goals. So that's it for today, guys. I hope you liked the video. If that's the case, please subscribe, leave a comment below, leave your reaction. What do you think about what I said? And I'll see you in one of my next video. Take care and bye.